Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number six from the International A Level at Excel Statistics S1 June 2019 paper. It says here Rampo's Hospital offers services to a large number of clinics that refer patients to a range of hospitals. So there's some clinics that offer or refer patients to hospitals if the clinics can't deal with their issues. The manager at Rampo's hospital took a random sample of 16 clinics and recorded two things. The distance in X in kilometers, the distance X in kilometers of the clinic from Rampo's hospital. And the percentage Y percent of the referrals from the clinic who attend Rampo's hospital. Okay, so the data are summarized as follows. So we have X bar equals 8.1. That means the average of the X values. That means the average distance of those um, clinics from the hospital. Y bar is 20.5. That's the average percentage of the referrals made by the clinics, which are for Rampo's hospital. And then you've got the sum of Y squared, which is the sum of all the percentages of the referrals from the hospitals in total, 8,266. Then you have these two things, SXY. Those two are basically um, a measure of how spread out the data is, okay, of the distances from the mean of the distances. Okay, so how spread out the X values are in total from the, from the mean. And this is a measure of how spread out the, the, the product of the distances and the percentage of referrals are from um, the mean of these two. It's, it's like an, a, an idea of, it gives you an idea of the variance. This is the variance of the X values amongst themselves. And this is the variance of the X and Y values with each other. Something like that. We don't really need to know too much detail of what these mean. In fact, many students answer these questions just by looking at the, the uh, formula sheet, right? So now it says part A, find the product moment correlation coefficient for these data. Now what that is, that is um, a measure of how closely correlated these two things are. How it tells us whether they're positively correlated or negatively correlated, and it tells us the, the strength of their correlation. That's what the value of R tells us. And to find the value of R, we can just quickly just quick turn to the formula sheet. Okay, so the formula sheet has these different, you know, things in them, right? What we're looking for is a product moment correlation coefficient. And it tells us that that is given by this formula here. Now, what we're interested in is in that part of it. We're interested in that part of the formula here. Okay, so I already have it here uh, ready for us. So this is the formula that we need. So to use this formula, we need to have SXY, which we have. So we can say R equals SXY, which as I said, we have, that's going to be um, negative 630.9 over the square root of SXX. So we got the square root of S double X, we have that as well, 368.16 times SYY. Now, we don't have SYY. So again, we go back to the formula sheet and we'll find that there is one of the formulas that says this. This is one of the formulas that we'll see in the formula sheet. SYY equals the sum of Y minus um, the mean of Y squared. That's all the Y values minus the mean squared or that's not going to help us here. We don't have all the Y values. Okay, so we can't use that. But we do have the sum of the Y's squared, which is this, so that's 8,266 8, minus, and we need the, the sum of, this is the sum of all the y values squared, which we have. We also need the sum of the y values, just the sum of all the y values, which we don't have, but what we do have is the mean of the y values, and we know they are altogether 16 clinics, so the number of clinics is equal to 16, n is equal to 16. So if I know that the mean is 20.5, um, then I can work out the sum of all the y values by multiplying 20.5 by the number of entries because I know that the mean of y is equal to y divided by the number of entries. That means y 
is equal to or the sum of y divided by the number of entries. And the mean of y is the sum of all the y values divided by the number of entries. So the sum of the y values is the number of entries times the mean of y. So this is going to be 16 times the mean of y, which is 20.5. So this is what's going to give us SYY. So SYY is going to be given by this formula or this calculation here. So it's 8,266. Okay, that's the sum of the square values of, of the, the, the y values all squared minus and then we're going to have the sum of y all squared so we're going to have um, put in brackets so the sum of y is 16 multiplied by 20.5 okay that close the bracket that has to be squared and then divided by the number of entries which is 16 divided by 16 all right that's divided by 16. So SYY is going to be, so it's going to be this minus that squared divided by 16. So 8266 minus 16 times 20.5, that's the sum of Y. Okay. And you've got square that and divide it by 16. And that's what we've done here. Okay. We've done that. So we press equals and that gives us 1542. 1542 is SYY. 1542. So now we're going to put here 1542. And therefore, R will be equal to, we put this in our calculator, we have a negative 630.9 divided by the square root of, and we have 60, uh, 368, sorry, 368.16, okay, multiplied by 1542. And that gives us negative 0 0.8373. Negative 0 0.8373 goes on. So we can say that's equal to zero, negative 0 0.837. That's your value of R. And there's the answer to part A. <clears throat> now part B says, give an interpretation of your correlation coefficient. Okay, so we've got to interpret what this means. Now when it says give an interpretation, the bad answer is to say very strong negative correlation. We can say that. We can say that there is very strong negative correlation. Okay, correlation. Now, because it's minus, it's negative. Because it's close to negative 1, it's strong. The closer it is to 1 or negative 1, the stronger the correlation is. The closer it is to 0, the weaker it is. This is very strong. This is like perfect negative correlation. This is perfect positive correlation. And if it's more than 0 0.8 or between minus 0 0.8 and minus 1, it's like very strong correlation. But this is not an interpretation. Okay? So we can, we can say, therefore, what we can say is, as, so this is about the clinics and the distances from the hospital, as the distance from the clinics um, increase, okay, we can say the distance between the clinics and Rampos Hospital, to make it more clear. As the distance between the clinics and Rampo's hospital hospital increases the percentage the percentage of referrals referrals okay attending Rampo's hospital decreases. That's what negative correlation is. One thing increases, the other one decreases. Attending Rampo's hospital decreases. Okay, hospital. What am I doing? I can't spell. <coughs> okay, decreases. So the more distance a clinic is from, the further the distance is from the hospital, the um, less percentage is of the referrals attending that Rampos hospital. We could say the other way around, as the distance between the clinic and Rampos hospital 
uh, decreases, then the percentage of referrals attending Ramp Hospital increases. We could say the other way around, the same thing. One of them increases, the other one decreases. So we have to give the context of the question. This is how we're supposed to give the answer, all right? Because it says interpret. Interpret means doesn't, you don't just say this. You don't say very strong neg negative correlation. That's true, there is very strong negative correlation, but you have to give an interpretation of this. Okay, you have to give an interpretation of this, which means you have to give um, like an explanation in layman's language, in you know everyday language, um, you know just common lang language. Talk about the distance between the clinics as it increases, the percentage of referrals attending the, the hospital, the, that hospital decreases. So there's part B and part A. Now we're going to go on to part C. All right, it says here state giving a reason whether or not these data support the manager's belief. So we can say yes. So what, one second, what does it say here? It says, the manager at Rampos Hospital believes that there may be a linear relationship between the distance of a clinic from the hospital and the percentage of the referrals who attend the hospital. She drew the following scatter diagram for these data, state giving a reason whether or not these data support the manager's belief and we can see from here that there is quite um, a strong correlation all right there looks like there's negative correlation and they're not too far away from being in a like you know close to each other there's a few out of the way but in general they're close they're pretty close to a straight line okay um, there's quite um, a clear negative correlation so we can say that um, the data the data supports the belief even the value of R supports the belief. Um, because her belief is what? That the distance um, of a clinic from a hospital and percentage, okay, there is, yes, okay, supports the belief as the data points, the data points, okay, lie relatively close to a straight line close to a straight line the, the closer they are to being in a straight line um, the stronger the correlation and the stronger the linear correlation right so that's about all you could write for that it's only one mark it's not a big issue now for part d part d says find the equation of the regression line of y on x giving your answer in the form y equals a plus bx. Now, in this case, the y-axis they give us is y and the x-axis is x. So there's no confusion there with different letters used. It's pretty simple. Now, again, we can go back to the formula sheet and we will find a statement saying this, that the least squares regression line on y on x is y equals a plus bx, where a equals the mean of y minus b times the mean of x. So basically, we've got to have an equation at the end. We're going to have y equals some constant, plus another constant times x. And now you can think of it as the a value we get is like the y-intercept, and the b value you're going to get is like the gradient. And that's going to be useful for us in another part of the question. Now, it says here that we've got to write down a and b. Now, to find a, we got the mean of y, which we know, minus b times the mean of x, which we can find, or we know as well, sorry. So to find a... We need to know what b is okay and then you know if we know what b is then we can put b value there and we can also find what a is and put a value there so the key here is to find what b is so the first step here in finding the regression line is to find the value of b and again we go to the formula sheet and we see this formula over here the regression coefficient of y on x is b which equals s x x x x y over s x x and we have that here we have both of those here, so we can write down straight away from our summary data that they gave us. We can say it's negative 630.9 over 368.16. That's the value of B. So we can take that and we can say negative 630.9 over, oops, over 368.16. What am I doing? Sorry over 368.16 now that gives us negative 1.7136 
negative 1.7136 goes on. So we can say that B to 3SF is negative 1.71. Right, that's the value of B, but um, I'm going to use that in my final answer when I write my equation. Okay, now we can find what A is. We know A is equal to the mean of Y minus B times the mean of X. So we can say A is equal to the mean of Y, which we know is 20.5 minus B times. Now I'm going to use B as its um, more accurate form from the fraction I had. So I'll use this for my B value, 368.16, okay, times the mean of X, which is 8.1. Okay, that's going to give me my A value. Okay, so if I take this, I've got that value there. I need to, that's my answer in my calculator. So I'm going to do 20.5 minus, and I'm going to have in brackets the answer, which was already negative in the thing calculate, minus times 8.1. And that should give me 34.380. 34.380 goes on. So therefore we can say A is equal to 34.4. Okay, A is equal to 34.4. So now we can say therefore the, equa the equation is Y equals A, which is 34.4 minus B times, or plus B, so it's minus 1.71 times X. This is the equation of the regression line of Y on X. So there's the answer to part D. And then it says, um, part E says, give an interpretation of the gradient of your regression line. The gradient. Okay, the gradient of the regression line is B. B is minus 1.71. Okay, so you can think of this as, as minus 1.71 over X, over, over 1, sorry, over 1. It's like the gradient, it's going down like this. So what you can think about it is for every 1 kilometer increase, in the distance as you increase by one kilometer okay then what happens is the number of referrals will decrease by 1.71 so we can say that this is like the gradient it's the rise of the run so for every one kilometer increase in the distance from the clinic to, from the hospital clinic to the hospital the number of referrals from the hospital drop by 1.71 percent so we can say that in words um, that's what the interpretation means so as the distance between the clinics and the hospital increase by one kilometer, the number of referrals, number of referrals um decreases by 1.71 percent okay so that's how we can interpret the gradient of the regression line you have to give it in terms of the um the context of the question all right in terms of the context of the question and the context of the question here is the distance from the clinics to the hospital and the number of referrals or percentage of referrals that are referred to okay referrals to the hospital to what was it called again I forgot the name already it was called rampos hospital rampos okay so that's talking about the referrals to rampos hospital rampos hospital Okay, so as the distance between the clinics and Ranpo's hospital increases, okay, by one kilometer, the number of referrals to that hospital decreases by 1.71%. That's how you can interpret the gradient of your regression line. They only want the gradient, okay? Here, the, the y-intercept doesn't really make that sense, much sense because the y-intercept means when the distance from the clinic to the hospital is zero, that's the percentage of referrals. Or it doesn't really make sense that the distance from the the clinic to the hospital is zero because you're going to be in the hospital anyway. So it doesn't really make sense, the wine set here, but the the gradient does. All right, now, then it says, um, draw your regression line on the scatter diagram. So we have our, our equation of our uh, regression line, and we want to draw it on the scatter diagram above, move it on this side. Okay, so we want to draw it on this 
graph. Okay, so what we can do is we can say, okay, let's draw the y-intercept, which is 34.4. Now that's 30, that's 35, that's 34. Each of these is one. So 34.4 is somewhere over here. So I'm going to put my one point on that point then. And then, for example, I can say let x equal, let's say 20. Let's see what we get. When we let x equals 20, see what y is, and we can plot that point. 34.4 minus 1.71 times 20. Let's put that in our calculator. So we're going to have 34.4 minus 1.71 times 20. That gives us 1 fifth, which is 0 0.2. So here we have 0, that's 0 0.5. Each one of these, so it's 0.2 is up here, basically. So when x is 20, y is 0 0.2, so it's over there. So all I need to do is join these two points together with one straight line. So I join them with a straight line, make it thin, and that's our line of best fit. Simple as that, right? Very easy. Okay, that's how you draw your line of best fit. And then it says, the manager believes that Rampos Hospital should be attracting an above average percentage of referrals from clinics that are less than five kilometers from the hospital. She proposes to target one clinic with some extra publicity about the services Rampos offers on the scatter diagram, circle the point representing the clinic she should target. So um, the average okay, of the referrals is 20.5. That's the average. That's the mean number or percentage of referrals. Okay, And less than 5 kilometers, that's 5 kilometers, okay, is this region over here. Okay, is this region over here. This is the region where the... You know, the, these are the dots are all um, referring to clinics which are less than uh, five kilometers from the hospital. Okay, and as we can see, the average is 20.5. So all of these are above average. The one that's below average is this one. This, the percentage of this clinic's referrals is less than 20%. And the rest of them are above average. Okay, so this is the, ta the one that she should target the one that's below average. So it just says circle the point, doesn't mention anything about explaining, just one mark. So that's it. That's the answer. Just circle that and you've got your answer. And um, yeah, that's the end of the question. That completes this question, which is question number six from the June 2019 International A-Level at Excel Statistics S1 paper. Um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that is going to appear somewhere in this region. Other questions from the topic of um, correlation and regression will appear in the playlist that should appear somewhere in this region. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle. Thank you for watching and see you soon.